So, yes. I, um, I had the story for the movie figured out. I had the script. Um, I, we were like, and I like, mm, fifth draft out of eight. Eight drafts total that I wrote um, before we started shooting. So it was like basically done. At that point, being a first time filmmaker and uh, being without connections in Hollywood or really anywhere, I was facing the same issues that most independent filmmakers face of funding, of financing. Um, movies are extremely expensive and uh, they're a very, very, very risky investment. Um, I thought that this movie wasn't going to, it was going to be too expensive to be funded with um, a uh, regular crowd sale plat a crowdfunding platform like Indiegogo or Kickstarter because um, the issue with these platforms, and they're great, they're like really great pl platforms, but um, they are essentially flawed as far as offering a return to the investors. They're not actually investors, they're donors. It's a donation-based business model that only rewards you with um, thank you, signed t-shirts and DVDs, and that's all great, but um, I, I knew that I would have been able to raise maybe 5 to 10K begging friends and family, and that wasn't, was not going to be enough. Um, on the other hand, I was facing issues with bigger production companies that were happy to fund the movie, but that wanted me to dumb down the script, make it more commercial, um, simplifying it, uh, and even, even like sexualizing it at times, um, which really was going against everything that I wanted these female characters to be. Um, and I didn't want to compromise on the vision of the movie, but I needed the money. Um, so I was stuck in this limbo, and I um, went to a music festival in Woodstock in 2015 by myself, it was one of those like I gotta go situation. I just like felt like I had to be there, and I went there by myself. And um, as I was wandering about the festival grounds and chasing the music and just enjoying myself and like meditating and connecting with my essence and the universe and whatnot, I uh, met Joseph Lubin, um, and he told me about cryptocurrency. He told me about the blockchain. He told me about. ICOs and it blew my mind and I was like that's really cool I wrote a movie <laughs> I was just like so like humbled by his like mind and then he uh, he started explaining in depth like what it really meant that cryptocurrency wasn't about money it wasn't about uh, technology it was about freedom it was about decentralization it was about democracy um, it's now there was a huge buzz everybody wants cryptocurrency because everybody loves money but the point is it's, it's bigger than that. It's the idea that we can uh, finance independent artists. Because if we can decentralize the economy, then we can democratize the arts. And instead of seeing the sequel of a prequel of something that you've already seen a million times on like or whatever blockbuster or Hollywood movie and going to the movie theater and just like feeling just sort of like washed over by this sense of I have already lived this and this is not awakening me, this is numbing me. Uh, you can truly empower change makers. You can empower people with crazy wild new stories. The problem is that we could be missing out on like, I don't know, the next Mozart because he doesn't have the money to uh, put into his art. And that's terrifying. I understand that Hollywood it is an it is a business. It it is a uh, an industry, and uh, it works as off of an algorithm of, of storytelling that they know it's profitable, and that's totally fine. But independent filmmakers need to be able to access funds to make the story their stories come true. <laughs> I um I. Likely enough, the um, headquarters of Consensus, that's the blockchain tech company, decentralized VC studio incubator, magical matrix wonderland that Joe created, um, is t two blocks away from where I live. Um, it's yeah, somewhere in Bushwick, and this like what? It's so funny because it's the like hippest like graffiti like in industrial warehouses. Um, artsy uh, scene in Brooklyn and you don't know that there is this hidden gem of the studio where these geniuses are like inventing apps on the blockchain, cryptocurrency, etc. 
and so every morning I would just like walk, I was modeling in the meantime, that was like 2015, 2017, um, to, so that I could, you know, just like focus on writing, because nobody was paying me at that uh, time, and uh, while I was doing that, I was also working uh, from the consensus studios um, to work on the script and to start figuring out how we were going to do this. Uh, in the most flawless way possible uh, because it had never been done before. We had to bridge the gap between Hollywood and uh, crypto. We had to find the right producers and thank God I found them. Um, Ariel Elwes and Logan Steinhardt. I knew that I needed someone, people that were young and eager to explore new business models and new um, storytelling, but that they were experienced enough to know what they were doing and Ariel and Logan were absolutely perfect. Um, we uh, spent about a year and a half planning the sale, uh, figuring out everything from like a legal standpoint, from the financial standpoint, from the just like more uh, like entertainment industry, like filmmaking side, how we're going to explain what we're doing to say, you know, talent agencies and uh, everybody that we were getting involved uh, for the movie because the sale happened in June 2017. Uh, it was June 7, 2017. And it ran for two weeks. We had like a three month countdown of just like, you know, like creating buzz articles and uh, just the countdown for the sale. And uh, and just to clarify for those who are kind of newer to the crypto space, you had a braid coin or yeah, token, a token, or, a braid, okay. a braid token. Uh, so yeah, it was a uh, like it was a uh, regular ICO with a braid token. We promised to um, return um, an additional fifteen percent to the investors in exchange for thirty percent um, of the um, net profits of the movie. So the sale was. Um, successful we we raised the amount that we needed in two weeks um and the investors are going to be the first ones to get uh paid back plus an additional 15 percent so it was a lot of work in terms of foundation but then once it started it was relatively quick yeah. the thing i can't quite figure out though is how did you manage um kind of the risk involved right because you can see the coin is worth something this day, and then it can plummet, I mean, in an insane right. way the next day, and then go to three times as high the next day. Right. Right? How did you kind of manage that? Because you need to know about a firm number when you're dealing with hard costs like actors, lights, etc. Right. So how did you do that? We set up an account with Bitfinex Market Index that basically uh, freezes the value of Ethereum at a certain price from the moment the sale begins. And the second that we hit our um, our goal, the sale closed. So there was just like no, like, oh, we made a little bit more, a little bit less, um, and the Ether got immediately converted into US dollars. Right. So everybody got paid in US dollars. Right. The movie is running on like normal. It's just like, like right now we're like a norm, like a, I guess normally like funded finance movie. It's just like the sale itself. There was this like magical like moment uh, of, uh, utilizing cryptocurrency, utilizing the, the freedom that it allows, and uh, the greatest thing is that I have, I got Final Cut because of it, and as a yeah, first time filmmaker that's unheard of, and I think that that's also why the movie is so wild and like just like so like hairless of whatever form of, I don't know, just like storytelling or three act structure or whatever it is that usually executive producers that have invested money in movies tell you to do or like cast a certain actor or make it a little bit more digestible for the audience add a sex scene it's like all these things you hear and it just like does like you know um take away power from the story take away from power from the storytellers i am definitely going to find my next project again with cryptocurrency yeah. without a doubt um i think that um it's uh um, so I have two projects, but I think that the one that I'm going to do next is this dystopian uh, desert quest, uh, all female cast and symbol, um, and it is going to be about climate change. It's going to be about overpopulation. It's going to be about violence against women, um, and I'm gonna tell the story in a um, 
Dune meets Mad Max meets Brave New World by Huxley, but like pastel colored like land. I want to make it this like very like beautifully like dusty like rose and like pinks and blues to make this like futuristic dystopian post-apocalyptic world like look so beautiful and so dreamy but at the same time I want to like accelerate basically what the consequences of our behavior towards nature and towards women is going to be like I always I wrote braid because of the things that I, I was scared of so I'm gonna keep doing that now I'm like terrified of like what, what are we doing to like the two things that create life women and the earth why are we betraying and like abusing of the two things that bring life to this world to, to everything um and yeah it's gonna be trippy because um that's just you know i think i think that it, i always believe that there's more to reality of what we see so i think that that's with or without hallucinogens like that's always going to be a theme in my in my movies of just like questioning reality um and uh how much of it it happens in your mind i encourage all filmmakers and all like independent artists to find alternative ways of funding their projects i think that your integrity um, is important just as important as what you're creating and in the end it's for me at least it manifested in this way of like my the way I went about uh, financing the movie sort of collided in the content of the movie itself it's like freedom uh, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm available and happy to consult and um, help other women figure this out because I think I, I think there this should be uh, this is the future, I think this is how things should be done.